Goodreads.com every year puts up uh, their their list, and you can also do write-ins. I've done some write-ins a time or two. Yeah, when when I didn't like what was presented, but did they win? No, no, <laughs> didn't even come close. Okay. So they put out you know the, the the books that got the most reads that year, and they categorize them, and everybody just goes and votes, and it's just decided by the readers. So sometimes sometimes I think that can be really helpful you uh-huh. know, because it, it often diverges from like, you know. Divergent? You know, you don't often have like the one, the one. The oh, I'm looking at some of these winners. They're real dumb. I know. That's where you're going. I know. Yeah. It, it doesn't, it's not often where you have Holy like crap. the big heavy. Just let me say this. <laughs> Where you have the big heavy award winners also winning the Goodreads Choice Awards. It doesn't happen that often. We have some of these this year, and um, what the Colson Whitehead one that I didn't like, Underground Railroad, was one that swept both popular vote and and the Ritzy Awards too. So, this is like the People's Choice Awards for books, and with that, I think uh, comes the good and the bad because as we were discussing off mic, look at a lot of these. A lot of these have the feel of like that's the only one I read. I recognize that name. Click, you know. Yeah. So. But it's like too easy in. to vote on Goodreads, ain't Let's it, people? Let's dive in. Best. I didn't vote this year. You didn't Does that vote make me a bad patriot? You didn't vote at all? No, I haven't read I anything. Haven't talked to you about the importance of voting Listen, many times. I the only books that are on only nominees that were on my shelf were the Umbrella Academy Volume Three, which I hated. Yeah. And then Daisy Jones and the Six, which is on my to read list. Okay. So no, I didn't vote because right. I didn't know. Well, but uh, apparently okay. that line of thinking was not common. I guess not. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look oh, at okay. top fiction. All right. So let me tell you the ones that I read and enjoyed on this list first. I read The Last Romantics by Tara Conklin. That was one that is, like, the frame story is set in, like, a post-apocalyptic world where this this 100-year-old poet is doing a reading, and then it dives back into her childhood and follows, like, her her whole life. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting, but I still don't understand the frame story. I don't really understand why you would put it in that setting, because it... It sets it off in a really weird way where you keep waiting for it to like come, come back, back to that. Or there, there's some reason why. Right. And, and I just think it that's just what happens to the frame story. So I liked yeah. it quite a bit. I also read and enjoyed A Woman Is No Man by E. Tough Rum. Um, that was a lot about, you know, uh, families and their, their religious and political struggles within the family and, and this woman feeling very like you penned in on, on what the expectations of her were and pushing against that and trying to find the tools to push against that. Mm-hmm. Very powerful book, also a difficult book to read. Mm-hmm. So those are the two that I read and enjoyed on this one. The top three books were Where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vandara. 29,000. 29,000. Second place is Normal People by Sally Rooney, which is 40,000. And then at 98,000 votes is The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. That's that's shocking. Which also won the uh, the Man Booker Award in a controversial split. tie. Tie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All did, right. Did you guys did you guys have any impact in any of these books reaching? No. Okay. I don't typically read adult fiction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't even think any of these are on my to read list. All right. So well, moving on to mystery and thrillers. Oh wow, you handled that like a champ. What? That winner. Well, I mean, you're not, it's just, you're not filled with rage, or I just I think it's a, I think it's a lot of name recognition. You yeah. know, there weren't many on there that were, you know, other ones that had yeah. had a lot of name recognition, and so that happens. I, my argument should be like read more, but I didn't read any of these. Yeah, so I, I didn't. But then I we realized last episode I haven't read a single book from 2019 except for this Michael Crichton wannabe book. Right, not even YA. Not a 2019 one yet, no. Hmm. Have we already done your performance evaluation? I read not. <laughs> Take a quick note. Wait! Wait! All right. Um, best mystery and thriller. So this is usually the one where I've got a pretty good spread on these, and I'm here to tell you both that I do not have a good spread on this this year. No uh, um, No mystery or thriller. There, there are several. You read this Ruth Webb, book? No, actually, I haven't. Oh, well. I haven't. I there are back. several on here that I wanted to read. My sister, the serial killer... For example, was one that was in the running for several awards. Yeah, I think the uh, the, the Women's Prize for Fiction and the Man Booker, I want to say. Um, but I, I plan to read Ruth Ware's Turn of the Key. I plan to read Riley Sager's Lock Every Door, Alex North's The Whisper Man. These were all ones that I that I wanted to read, but I just uh, I never got to. So um, the only one on this list that I've actually like read in its entirety was Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. Um, their first book, The Wife Between Us, I thought was great. I loved it. This book about a, a psychologist who is messing with one of her students and, and you're not sure what's part of the test and what isn't, I thought was such 
such a lifetime original movie of a book that I just mm. really didn't like it. So I actually didn't vote in this category. All right. Uh, the top winners are Turn with, of the Key. Uh, with, yeah, Turn of the Key with Ruth Ware had 31,000 votes and some change. My Sister the Serial Killer with 52,000. And then The Silent Patient by Alex McKelides, which um, when that came out, that had a huge... People loved this book. I mean, mm-hmm. it was everywhere. I actually got a, an, an arc of the audiobook at the ALA conference and always meant to read it and just never got around to it. This mm-hmm. is the one where the... Uh, Almost 70,000 votes. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite a good one there, a uh, number of um, votes. This is the one about the, the married to a famous painter and then the murder uh, Oh, yeah. Who speaks again. Yeah. It's interesting, and, and I've heard a lot of good things about it, but mm-hmm. just never, uh, never got to it. Some other familiar names on the list here. We've got Michael Connelly is on there. Uh, Harlan Coben's on there. Um, but that's it for, for the big ones, really. So Historical fiction. Let's do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Any, any on here impact either of you? I mean, Nickel Boys is by Colson Whitehead is on this list, and that's one that's been on several of the lists of top ten books right. of the decade, um, in the running for a lot of different yeah. things. Also, Ta-Nehisi Coates, The Water Dancer. Mm-hmm. Um getting a lot of a lot of good praise is what yeah. I plan to read um, um, Kate Quinn's The Huntress is at 25,000 Nickel The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead's at 29,000 for second place and the winner uh, making Nick happy is at 82,000 votes with Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid this, this really is an excellent book there were some I that. there were some developments that I was not thrilled with but it didn't hurt the overall um you know, uh, layout of the book, and it is mm-hmm. it's it's put together like an as told to memoir. So there's not narration; it's just dialogue. Mm-hmm. This person, this person, this person, this person, and it works so well. It's it's one like Stephen King's. Um, oh, what is that one called? The one that I love that Stephen King that's part of the Bill Hodges trilogy. No, nope. Finders Keepers. Okay, Finders Keepers is all about this uh, this author who has all these manuscripts, and I spent that whole book hmm. wanting to read those books. Daisy Jones and <laughs> the Six is the same way. Mm. It's about this band, and you hear all these songs, and you hear all these like epic performances, and you just want to experience them, and you mm. can't because it's fake and in a book. But... Does it go into their uh, the production of Tusk? I don't get. I don't get the. the... Fleetwood Mac song Tusk uh, that I kind see. of broke them I think it is kind of uh, yeah. Fleetwood Mac influenced yeah. but um, anyway some other ones that are on here right. is there ever a fight between the characters where one of them's like you know what you can just go your own way and then somebody else is in the background like go your own way that is, that is the implication <laughs> we've got uh, Ann Patchett's <laughs> The Dutch House which has been a bestseller for a long time on here we've mm. got Lisa C The Summer Island of, of 69 yeah Ellen Hildebrand made the list a lot of big names on here um, mm-hmm. But Taylor Jenkins Reid and Daisy Jones and the Six took it, which I was pleased with. Yeah. I thought that was deserving. Best fantasy. Uh, Kate, maybe you maybe you adult fantasy. There, there's one on here. I've actually yeah. read. Cool. Okay. Uh, Kate, what, little... is oh. which, what is it? Oh, what is it? What is it? Uh, the Patricia Briggs Storm Curse. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, right. I should have known. Yeah. I should have. Known. I'm a little surprised. Uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James is here. Um, at Le- like low. Lower. Yeah, but that one had a lot of people talking about it, it and I had people like asking about it and returning yeah. it but also some people returning and be like that was too weird for me mm-hmm. so uh, I don't know Ten, uh, The 10,000 Doors of January by mm-hmm. Alex Harrow my wife read and absolutely loved mm-hmm. it was one of her favorite books of the year so. well, she's a huge fan of doors yeah, doorways just door frames doors. Don't love doors in um, Age of Legend by Michael Sullivan I think that's book three of a series I actually plan to start so okay. book one is on my to read list um, I haven't read a Joe Abercrombie book since uh the heroes okay. and that wasn't super great dark dawn is so, book yeah. three of uh the jay christoph trilogy that was like never night um that was pretty popular okay i think uh, the blood and bone is the second one of the nora roberts that we were just talking about yeah like, yeah you might be right sort of yeah things. that makes sense mm-hmm. um third place for best fantasy is george rr R. martin's fire and blood which that's is that gotta be book. that's gotta be a, yeah oh i know that name click mm-hmm. yeah I, was, I don't think anybody really liked but at the that. same time it's still only 33 yeah um, all right the Star of the Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Fairly new. This is one that... Um, is she, in second she wrote, place. She wrote The Night Circus many, many years uh, ago. Yeah. And I loved that book. Mm-hmm. So I would like to read this, but I haven't. Uh, and number one, the winner is at 53,000 votes, The Ninth House by Leah Bardago. Now, I'm not really familiar with her work. I, I've Mainly read the, a young adult. I've read the graphic novel of her Wonder Woman book. Right, Warbringer. That's as close as I've come to reading Leigh Bardugo. Have you read her any no, first time? No, I keep seeing her name pop up, and I feel yeah. like I should, but I mm. just haven't grabbed one of hers yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, romance. Adult romance. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I don't. Any funny? I, and what's the funniest tile? Because uh, does that say brazen and the beast? Brazen and the beast. That's pretty funny. That's fun. Beer necessities. Well, I can tell you that the Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren was one that was very popular here in this library in particular. It got a lot of good marks when it came out. Things You Save in a Fire also had a lot of good buzz about it. That was one that I had intended to read and my hold never came in mm. because it was so popular. Um, uh, so third place is The Unhoneymooners yeah. by Christina Lauren. Second place is Verity or yeah, Variety? Verity. Uh, Colleen Hoover. This is not one that I'm familiar with at all. Number one, Red, White, and Royal Blue yeah. by Casey McQuinch. I that's, actually think that's a young adult book. No, we have it here. It's in the collection. It's, oh. in, the, it's in the adult books. All right. Yep. This is about... Uh, the first son falls in love with the Prince of Wales. So yes. It's like American and yeah. European. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Wait, did you drive on the left side of the road? We can't. <laughs> it's forbidden. We mustn't. Yeah. Uh, Sci fi. Science fiction. Mm hmm. Let's see. All right, Eric. Uh, Chuck Wendig. Did any of, these, any of these make their way to your heart? No, I didn't read any of these, nor have any of them made it to my one word kill. We keep that's a young adult book for us. All right, well, uh, James S. A. Corey's uh, latest expanse book, number eight, yeah, made the list here. Neil Stevenson's on our list. Mm -hmm. uh, Timothy Zahn's Thrawn Treason, which is the third in the Thrawn books. It's a new Thrawn trilogy. Yeah, you're right. I only read the first of that trilogy uh -huh. and was not really uh, yeah on board for it. All right, well then, uh, but but if you are a fan of Timothy Zahn. Episode oh. 156, The Works of Timothy Zahn. Third place at 23,000 votes, Gideon the Ninth. Second uh, by Tamsin Muir. Uh, Dark Age, Pierce Brown. This is what, like a third book in the series? This is book five of the Rebel okay. Rising Saga, yeah. Uh, 35,000 votes. 41,000 votes for first place is Recursion by Blake Crouch. My wife also read this and uh, loved it. Oh. So, I don't know. I, well, she I, loves when things recursion. Yeah, she loves any <laughs> any form of recursion. Yeah. This is not, I've not, not read Blake Crouch. I watched the show Wayward Pines, which is based on his books. Oh, That's I didn't know that. That's as close as I've come to, uh, All right. to reading that. Horror. So. I don't have much to say in the way of horror. Oh. Outside of the winner is stupid and not a horror book. Yeah. So that should go in sci-fi. I was kind of horrified by how bad it was. Oh! Uh, number three is The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. Looks like a little Red Riding Hood kind of thing. Sure does. Stephen Chabowski. Why, why does that name He wrote for Perks her? of Being a Wallflower. That's yeah. it. All right. Imaginary Friend. Looks like it's the uh, d dark side of being a wallflower. Yeah, so. uh, is at second place with 22,000. And then first place with 75,000 votes. Stephen King's The Institute. I refuse to believe that 75,000 people loved that book. And yeah, that's <laughs> definitely... It. Oh, it's Stephen King. And, yeah. But the book rating is at 4.23. It's insane. Are people it's pure the madness. worst? It's pure madness. Uh, if you'd like to hear more about Stephen King's The Institute, just go back uh, a few episodes. There's a five-star like review here that just cannot get enough. Five-star... Okay, I gotta leave. I'm mad now. Yeah. Get me to humor. Laughter's the best medicine when people like Stephen King's worst crap. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, All right. Talk to us about humor. Uh, did you read Selena Meyer, A Woman First, no, First Woman? No, I love Veep, and I wanted to read that book, but I don't think it's in our system. You'll have to uh, get the audiobook. Yeah, I know. That's she, the she thing. Reads I, I, was really, right? I was really holding out for the audiobook because yeah. uh, I do. Kate, what's the funniest book you've ever read? I don't really do funny books. I don't know. Unless do you, you don't a read your book. <laughs> yeah, that's Does that count? Do you have a funny picture book you want to mention? <gasps> what the dinosaurs did at school. Kate loves to be put on the spot. I know, right? I'm going to think about it. All, All right. right, yeah. Selena Meyer's the book here is is based on the character from Veep, of course. Yeah. And, uh, it, it read read in character uh, as is this the book that she's on tour for in like season six? No, that's... Uh, okay. uh, I can't remember what that one's called. Um, all right, so number three at 13, or almost 14,000 votes, is Much Ado About Mean Girls, which is the uh, William Shakespeare version of Mean Girls. I met Ian Dosher at the, uh, at the ALA yeah. conference. Yeah, that's where I got a copy and, of it. And uh, we had a really nice chat because he's, uh, he also was writing a Back to the Future one at the same time. He didn't have any advanced copies of the Back to the Future one, which I really wanted. Down. But uh, we chatted about our, our, our uh, joint love of Back to the Future. Mm. Mm. And how he was a little nervous about adapting Mean Girls, because <laughs> mm. it was sort of outside of his regular thing. But uh, I got a copy of this and gave it to my niece. Number two is Chelsea Handler, Life Will Be the Death of Me. And number one is Ali Wong, Dear Girls. So, 
There you go. That's humor. I, I also want to mention uh, F and Birds by Aaron Reynolds. Has anybody heard of this? I know. I just he saw has it. A, it's a, he has a hilarious Twitter feed. He has a he has a Star Trek one where he takes like Star Trek gifts and basically makes the characters swear in oh. frustration. And it's uh, very juvenile. And I would never ever laugh at such a <laughs> such a lowbrow form of humor. Yeah, I came up with a funny book though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, you did. You upper, did. Upper. No, what was it? Yeah, uppercase. Trouble in Capital City. It's a I new one that we one. got. It Is was, it a picture it book? It was punny. Oh. Yeah. And I laughed the whole way through. The kids were looking right. at me like I was crazy. Sorry. I came up with one. <laughs> uh, all right. Where, where are we now? Nonfiction. That's nonfiction. That's nonfiction. I have uh, no dinosaur list. books this year. No. Oh, maybe that's in science. Could be. Yeah. I do. Uh, Ronan Farrow's book, Catch and Kill, is on this, and that feels like a really a great uh, piece of journalism there. And I, I mm. would like to read that, but I, I haven't. And... Uh, that's that's going to be a rough read, definitely. Okay. Um, Mark Manson has a book on here. Everything is effed. That's two. That's two f's in this episode. Oh boy. But I read I read one of his other books that was in the same series and enjoyed it. Okay. So, but I haven't read that one. Um, so let's look at the top here. What do we got? Uh, the top three. So third place is maybe you should talk to someone by Lori Gottlieb. Anyway. Uh, Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered by Karen Klingeriff and Georgia Hardstark is at numbers two. And the winner is Rachel Hollis's Girl Stop Apologizing. Mm. Girl Wash Your Face was her, her book before this, so we couldn't keep uh, that on the shelves. So no. It was like yeah. impossible. Yeah, very pop. So. Very pops. Very pops. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Thanks. Uh, number, best memoir and autobiography. Uh, bah, 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 any dinosaur books here? You think there's no. a dinosaur memoir? Biography, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what Raptor Red is? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. Uh, Julie Andrews is at number three with Homework. Oh. A uh, memoir about my Hollywood years. That's probably smart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number two is Chanel Miller, Know My Name. And number one is Over the Top, A Raw Journey to Self-Love by Jonathan Van Ness. All right. I haven't read any memoirs we this have year. The, uh, we have Me no by Elton John, which is lower on the list, but mm-hmm. that, was, that was a little popular here. I can't and wait uh, to Demi Moore's memoir. book, also uh, Inside Out, just was wearing one a turtleneck that, and a black and white photo. One that had a decent amount of requests on it. Question: Should I start wearing more turtlenecks? You know what? I'm gonna buy a bunch. I'm just gonna go right into it. I'm just gonna change my life to be a turtleneck-centered lifestyle. Okay. All right. Best history and biography. Uh, any da 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 da. The anarchy, madam. All right. Uh, of the pioneers, it's got a lot of things. Pioneers about... is a David McCullough book, and mm-hmm. that's. Uh, that's an interesting one because it's I've I've read several David McCullough's and enjoy them but there's always there's always a bit of a slog you know mm. there's always like oh this is the boring part cool right. like I read his, one of his Teddy Roosevelt books and there was an entire chapter about Teddy Roosevelt's asthma and it just wouldn't quit mm. it wouldn't quit yeah how much uh, did he really say about asthma I, yeah, I mean, a lot a full wow. chapter's worth That's but this is about the pioneers mm-hmm. and it's written in a little bit more of a it's written it has more of the feel of a novel in some ways mm-hmm. I could not get into this book. I read, you know, maybe 150 pages or so, and was just like, I, uh, so, mm. got nothing to add. Uh, number three, then, is Say Nothing, A True Story of Murder and Memory in Northern Ireland. Number two is Midnight in Chernobyl by Adam Higginbotham. So, I imagine that was very popular due to the miniseries yeah. Chernobyl. Chernobyl, I find, is such a fascinating topic. I haven't read this book, but I'm fascinated by the topic. Hmm. You just stared at me blankly. Well, I, was, so I thought long. there was going to be more with you being no, like, no, I'm fascinated just, by this part of it. Just adding uh, some uh, color commentary. Uh, the Five is at number one with The Lives of Jack the Ripper's Women mm. by Haley Rubenhold. Sounds interesting. It does. I don't recommend being one of Jack the Ripper's women. Nope. <laughs> That's the takeaway from that book. All right. Let's look into Best science, science and technology. All right. Got any, uh... yeah, dinosaur books. Uh-huh. None. But we do have Mama's Last Hug, which looks like the saddest animal book in the world. So sad. It's just a chimpanzee. Uh, animal emotions and what they tell us about ourselves by Franz oh, DeWall. Mama's Last Hug. Jeez okay. Louise. There's enough in life to make me sad. I don't feel that I need that. No. But... Um, All right. Let's look at our top three. The, the Bo- Body by Bill Bryson. A Guide for Occupants. <laughs> <laughs> Invisible Women, Data Bias and the World Designed for Men at number two with 28,000 votes. And, oh, this is a slim one. Uh, the, there's only about 1,000 different here. Not even. Uh, will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs? <laughs> Yikes. Big Questions from Tiny Mortals About Death That's by Caitlin Doughty. Yeah. Caitlin. What? Caitlin. 
Oh, yeah. I you said, you talking to Kate. You said Catelyn. You said oh, Catelyn I sure did. Dobby. Hey, I'm going to skip food and cookbooks. Well, let's just say the winner. All right. Go ahead. Well, I, mine's not loaded yet. Well? I didn't know you were going to jump on it. The winner is Antony in the Kitchen with 25,000 votes. Finally, I know what cookbook to buy this year. Yeah, you do. All right. Uh, best graphic novels and comics. What have you read on this list? Uh, I've read the first volume of Mon- Monstrous, so I haven't read volume four. Okay. I haven't read uh, The Adventure Zone Murder on the Rock I don't think you heard the question I asked. Because, but I've read volume one, but I'm not caught up with the Rockport Limited part of the podcast because okay. this is a podcast thing. You read Under the Moon, the Catwoman tale. Oh, that was Both terrible. Oh. Did you read this? Oh, you didn't. Okay, this is... It was real bad, though, huh? I've trashed this book so many times. I feel oh, no. bad because I, I met Lauren Miracle. She was so pleasant. She was so nice. Davis Cat ears. I wish her all the success, but mm-hmm. this book is that terrible. Yeah. Good, huh? It's just... It's just... I said this back, back when we first reviewed it, but it's like... She was not aware that that the character of Bruce Wayne is actually Batman, <laughs> oh, and no. it doesn't seem like she has any concept of what Catwoman is. I just mm. found it to be dark and unpleasant, and like it completely misses every character. Mm. That's too bad. So I would put that very low. Okay. I really liked Cami Garcia's uh, Teen Titans book, Raven. I, I thought, read that one too. Did you like that? Yeah, I like that one. I thought that was really good. I liked that quite a bit. I read Paper Girls Volume 5, which I thought was good, if not a little wordy, for yeah. a final volume. Yeah. I read Umbrella Academy Volume 3, which I, I thought was garbage. I've not read any of the Umbrella Academy, but I also met Gerard Way. So what are you going to do? Stop. This thing's picking I'll up. I'll touch whatever I want to touch. <laughs> I'm touching the microphone Oh, right boy. Now. Number three is The Handmaid's Tale, the graphic novel. Uh, number two is Heartstopper by Alice uh, Osman. And number one is Pumpkinheads by Rainbow Rowell. A uh, book I haven't really he- heard much uh, in you know, the way of like people excited about. That's, it. A, that's a slim margin. You got yeah. Rainbow Rowell there, and then I imagine that's name recognition. You know, I got a I got an arc of this that was just the first chapter, and I thought it was so boring. There was no, I like Rainbow Rowell. I've read a lot of her books, um, but this one, I, for whatever reason, I just could not get into it. So mm. even after we got it, I never picked it up. Didn't we do a Rainbow Rowell spotlight like mm-hmm. forever ago? That was like our first all the books nights. Was it? I can't find yeah. it. I can't find what episode that is. Maybe it's can't not help called... You. I want to. Maybe okay. it's not called Rainbow I want to help you. We're going to find it. The okay. best... The number one for best poetry is Shout by Laurie Hulse Anderson. Uh, I have no things to talk about with poetry. We should have made Malik pop up here and yeah. tell us about these poetry yeah. books. Yeah. Word by word, the votes come in. Uh, that's it. That's my poem. Mm-hmm. That was it. Uh, what is this? So, Shout this... is by the author of the novel Speak, which is pretty... That's a popular book. You know, yeah, speak. that's a speak. pretty intense young adult yeah, book. Yeah. Uh, best debut novel is also Red, White, and Royal Blue by oh, Casey McQuistion. A double winner. Uh-huh. What else do we have in the list here? I think I read a couple of these. Uh, well, a lot of the okay. stuff has already been... Yeah, A Woman like is No Man, I read. Yeah. 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 Young adult fiction time! Here we go. Here we go. Are you guys gonna, are you guys gonna nail these? Are you gonna have them all? Let's see. Okay. Are we going to have them all? That we've got. Uh, number three is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth uh, Acevedo, mm-hmm. who wrote... The Poet X. Poet X, which I've read, yep. Uh, third place is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Second place. Second place. I meant second place. Uh, and number one, I didn't realize this was this year, because that movie happened real fast then. Mm-hmm. Five Feet Apart. By uh, I didn't Rachel know Lip- I thought that was Lippincott. Older. We have uh, a couple of copies of that. Yeah, that's the whole. They can't be five I, feet. I haven't read that one, other. and I have. But I, yeah, I mean, I haven't read. We anything. have these books. I I haven't read many of them. Capturing I, the Devil. I enjoyed here. Elizabeth Acevedo's um, Poet X. I didn't yeah. love it. I didn't. It's hard not to compare it to the Kwame Alexander stuff. It's a very similar like mm-hmm. the format. It's a similar yeah, format. The I didn't like it as much as okay. I liked, you know, Crossover Rebound. But Young yeah. adult fantasy and science fiction. Here we go. Uh, Kate, anything? Um, I'm reading Rebel uh-huh. by Marie Lu right now. Mm-hmm. I loved Sorcery of Thorns. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's right. her second book, but that one was really good. Mm-hmm. And uh, The Wicked King is on my to-be-read list. Okay. Well, number three is Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. Just take her off these lists. It's not teens reading these books anymore, okay? <laughs> it's adults. She was on the adult list as well. Yeah, well, no more. I'm okay. sick of getting these books. I love the look of... Yeah. I love the look of Supernova. 
by uh yeah that's Marissa the Lerner. that's that book two three. Of book three book three oh yeah i'm running uh number two is rainbow rouse wayward son i don't know how that's the sequel to uh carry on yeah i thought nobody liked carry on i don't know did you I read carry on no. that that's the fantasy book that fangirl that's her that's her oh. like harry yeah. potter ripoff yeah harry potter twice yeah that's the sequel number one is the wicked king by holly black this is Book two of the Folk in of the Air mm. series. So you know what? Yeah. I have a confession to make. I like the Spider Wick Chronicles. I've read all of those. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I have a confession yeah, to make. Written by Holly Black. I keep getting Holly Black books for the library. I cannot pay people. I cannot hide money in the Holly Black books and get them to check out here. I check them out. Oh well, you've been making an extra five dollars off of those checkouts. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, middle grade fiction. Uh, middle grade. And children. So wait, are you going to read The Wicked King then, Kate? Yes. Oh. Is that part of a series or is it just a yeah. I got to go get a 10 out of that book real quick. <laughs> the Folk of the Air, number yeah. two. Yeah, okay. the first one is The Cruel Prince. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I read that one. Yeah. All right. Um, what, what's here on the best fiction? Anything I mean, interesting? Are you looking at middle grade now? Yeah. Middle grade and children's fiction? Oh, that's weird. New Kid. Well, and Guts. Those are graphics. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm with you now. All right, I, I recognize that, Kate, you mentioned... Remarkable Journey of Coyote yes. Sunrise. Yeah. I have seen this book book number many four. times. Yeah. Yes, I know what you mean. Well, third place is Guts by Renee Telgemeier, which has not been as popular. Raina Telgemeier. Raina Telgemeier. As I, old it has not been as popular as I had hoped for one of her new graphics, mm-hmm. uh, at least here. Victoria Schwab's uh, Tunnel of Bones. Is that one we have? Yeah, or the first one. I can even get the second one, I guess. I... The yeah, Trials yeah. of Apollo, which is... Oh, The Tyrant's Tomb, which is book four of The Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan. Is it number one? Is that... I children, have, children's is always so boring, because it's like always Riordan just Rick always Riordan. Yeah. 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 So... I wanted to read, I, I at, at that same conference, mm-hmm. um, Meg Wolitzer was there, and I just read The Female Persuasion, and she her book on here, The Night Owl from Dogfish. Mm. Two Night Owl from Dogfish looked really good to me, and I never read that. <laughs> and I've never read any of Chris Colfer's books. Have you read any of those, Kate? Tale of Magic is, is on the list here. Hmm. All right, here you guys go. Best picture books. I'll step out for a while. You guys can talk about uh, what you've been Kate reading to your kids. Have, Kate and I have already had our uh, off mic beef about the, yeah. the winner here. We both we both have a beef with the winner of this. So let's just start with saying what the winner is because I don't think this is the winner. So we'll disregard. But um, what actually won here with twenty nine thousand votes is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. The poetry of Mister Rogers. Mm. So. First of all, I love Mr. Rogers. Sure. I love the, the songs and the poetry. Yep. This is objectively not a picture book. Nope. It doesn't belong in this category. No, it does not. It's it like is. 80 pages long. Yeah, I, longer it's than not, that. It's, that's a big one. It is a collection, so technically it should be nonfiction. It's a nonfiction poetry book. Yep. Yeah. I would never put this with... Oh, I thought he was holding the Infinity Gauntlet, but it's Daniel Tiger. Yeah, it's Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Tiger Boy. Senior. Without my glasses. <laughs> so yeah, what this is, it's I mean, it's a nice illustrated book. It, the illustrations are nice. Each page has a different, uh, you know, song from Mr. Rogers on it. Uh-huh. Um, I don't. It's not a picture book. No, picture book is a a, a story, right? A full yeah. story. So put put this in poetry collection, and then my, maybe we'll talk. My wife read Mo Williams' uh, "Because" to her class. Um, which kind of talks about because this person did this yeah. thing, this music happened, this band happened, this person. Mm-hmm. And she said her kids were like enthralled and just very excited for every page to turn and see what was coming next. So I know you didn't like that, Nick. No, I didn't but particularly. The, enjoy that uh, we're the not kids big in Mo her Williams class. Fans. Yeah, yeah. Mo Williams is annoying. But, <laughs> but this book seemed to have. Uh, <laughs> Kate and I are trying to be diplomatic, and you're like, yeah, he's a chump. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just so. Everything's in bold. Caps locks on, Mo Williams. Mo. I know we have the proudest blue. I liked that one. Oh, I haven't read that one. Um, Why don't you guys talk about what you have read then? How okay. To a, how to read a book by Kwame Alexander. I loved that. Yeah, that was that my one favorite. Was really good. The Undefeated by Kwame Alexander was on. There. I haven't it's read The Undefeated, good. but uh, How to Read a Book is all. I mean, it's it's more illustration than story. The yes. illustrations are, or the the narration of the story is kind of hidden within the. Um, what, what would you call that art style? I mean, it's, it's kind almost of, like a collage. Yeah, that's it. Of? Yeah, that's what yeah. I would say. But I really like that. My son loved it. He wanted to read that all the time. The Good Egg is at number three. I really, I liked that one. I liked it better than The Bad Seed. Jory yeah. John. Oh, okay. Uh, and number two was Lupita Nyong'o's, the actress? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Salway. Yeah. Which I thought that was really nice, too. That's, that's, um, 
that becomes, I mean, it sort of starts as a story <gasps> about uh, where this little girl came from, and then it, then it morphs into more of like a magical journey uh, about, about it. And it's illustrated really beautifully. The story's great. The cover looks gorgeous. That's well, not one that I've, I've come across, but mm-hmm. it is on my list to order now. What is this uh, tiger like me? Is it good? That's the one that we can't get. Only yeah. one person in the system has it, and we can't get it. It's on my list now, too, so yeah. we will have it soon. Look, there's a little boy dressed up as I a really, tiger. I really like, really like Just Because, too, by, uh, what is it, Mac Barnett? Is that it? Oh, Just yeah. Because, will you hover over? Yeah, I'll hover over it. Thank you. Mac Barnett, yeah, why did I have to hover? Barnett. Yes. <laughs> this this was my son's absolute favorite. That was the he one I laughed hysterically for at this. One. It was mm. so good. Yeah. And we have Hair Love, too. Yeah. That, one's, right. that one was number four. So. I thought this was a pretty good crop overall. Uh, oh, you do? Too. Oh, the picture yeah. looks. Except for Mr. Rogers. Yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 get out of town, just, Mr. Rogers. If we just dismiss that. What have you done for us it's lately? I thought, um, a right? Pirate, that's, that's these two. Oh, my. <laughs> Pirates Don't Go to Kindergarten was a lot of fun. It's about a kid who's having trouble like making the transition from preschool, preschool to kindergarten, kindergarten yeah. uh, which I can definitely relate to. So it was uh, that book was kind of cathartic and, and a helpful book. And I hadn't read others like that, so it was kind of nice to see that. Um, a Piglet Named Mercy was also by Kate DiCamillo, was also uh, yes. pretty popular with my Kate son. Kate so. she's spot on. Yeah. I always like yeah. her. So. All right. There we go. Good yeah, so Choice did, Awards 2019. I did like the picture book crop, but I think... Much like last year, I wasn't a huge fan of this uh, selection overall. Yeah. Um, the winner, winning book that I was most pleased with was uh, Daisy Jones and the Six. I thought that was very deserving. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of over the Testament. I just don't the the, yeah. the Margaret Atwood book. I'm yeah. I'm I'm not really interested in anything that's won outside of the Daisy Jones book. Um, what did you think about the young adult book winners though? I don't know. We're we're so rural and different uh-huh. when it comes to the crowd uh i didn't really i mean five feet apart yeah that was very popular mm-hmm. uh but again is it uh most read or most liked yeah uh yeah with the i was i think i'm really disappointed by the sci-fi uh and fantasy ya one it, it seems like a lot of sequels and like i don't care about cassandra claire's stuff and neither do uh, most of our teens here. Mm-hmm. I, a lot I of really that with these awards, so it's always yeah. whatever the newest sequel yeah. is, yeah. the next book in a series. It's always way up on yeah. the list. So I'm really so going. I mean, sticking with the the YA fantasy, I'm really surprised to see Wayward Son because I had always got the impression that Carry On was not a popular Rainbow yeah. Girl book. So. I don't know. I think people would rather more books like uh, Eleanor and Park and yeah. Fangirl, yeah, rather than more of this. And that looks very 80s to me. I'm like, Ugh, yeah, yeah. Ah. They're huge, too. I don't really know the market. Because, like, you have to read Fangirl to really get the joke. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. That's too bad. Not, not for me, anyway. I, I always intended to read it because I've read all of her other novels except yeah. for Carry On, and now there's a sequel. But yeah. but the, the Simon Snow parts of Fangirl were my least favorite parts of that book. So have you read that one, Kate? Mm-hmm. They're yeah. not fun. All right. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. That's the Good Reason Choice of uh, Awards 2019. Hope yep. you voted. It's important. We have... Uh, we our founding have, fathers died so that we could yeah, vote for the Good Reason Choice different. Award. And uh, we have many, if not all, of the winners in this. And any that you see in here that we don't have that you want, just let us know, and we will certainly get them for you, either through one of the other libraries in our system or out into the big... No library. promises. Um, but let's talk some library news. It's the end of the year. We've got, uh, we've got the Nutcracker coming up. That's going to be down in the auditorium. Why are you getting so quiet and thoughtful? You just turned into Mr. Rogers there. <laughs> Friday the 13th. <gasps> and yeah, that's o'clock. when Black Christmas comes out, too. And then the Saturday the 14th movie. and Sunday the 15th at 2 o'clock. And then we're doing a, a trimetry party with our friends on yes. Saturday at 1230. Kate's going to read a book if I remember to bring it back. <laughs> And then we're doing, I'll read we're, one anyway. we're doing crafts and friend. things, right? The I believe crafts. the friends have some ornaments that the yeah. kids can decorate. They'll have some cookies. Ooh. We're hoping that maybe a couple of the dancers could spare a few minutes yeah. to yeah. pop up and visit with the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, like Nick said, I'll be reading a story, so we'll have a little bit of something going on the whole time. Our Christmas book club is reading The Twelve Clues of Christmas by Reese Bowen. That's on the 17th Woo. at 3.30, so you can join us for that. Uh, and then we're just kind of winding down. We've got our annual showing of uh, Muppets Letters to Santa. We're showing what Toy Story 4. Yep. We've got uh, Rudolph and Frosty's New Year. What is it? Shiny, Rudolph's Shiny New Year. Rudolph's yeah, Shiny that's New what it's Year, called. Yes. So you can always find those at davidahowlibrary.org or on Facebook at David A. Howe Public Library. Woo! And next week we're going to be talking to sci-fi legend Alan Dean Foster. The week after that, we're going to be doing our uh, Christmas, Christmas book, club. book Club where we read a cozy Christmas book. I already book. did. I know. Me too. 
Bo's Bo's reading one that's about a ghost hunter spending Christmas with her mother-in-law. What so the heck? I'm pretty excited to hear <laughs> to hear about that book. So yeah. join us. Christmas Meanwhile, you're giving me out. books about how a person needs to make the best Christmas soup of the season. You can read whatever you want. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you. I just need to find the perfect Christmas carrots to put in this Christmas soup. Eric was hurt by this last year. He read what, a Joanne Fluke book. Yeah. Gee, I don't even remember what it was. Gingerbread was, Hell. Yeah, he really, <laughs> really hated it. I love really the way you it. make cookies, Mom. Thank yeah. you. I used the eggs. Oh! <laughs> you want to talk about it for 20 wow, minutes? Wow. Yes! A scathing indictment of... Was this where the uh, Christmas Pony books came in, this too? Is, yeah, this is yeah, right. He's reading yeah, this year I, I gave Nick the... I was like, just give me a book about a horse that needs a home for Christmas. Yep, and I did it. And then you <laughs> yell at me about it. So. All right, oh, that's going to do it. Break. That's going to do it. You can't catch a break. <laughs> and I can't. <laughs> you have a Christmas book club with two of your friends. That's true. Poor Nick. <laughs> that's true, that's true. All right, it's going to do it for this week on the All the Books Show. Kate, thanks for joining us against hey. your will. <laughs> and uh, we'll be here next week with Alan Dean Foster. We'll see you then. Alan Dean Foster.